Okay, so here we have my new 90 watt monocrystalline panels. They're rated at a max in around 5 amps, and or sorry, they're rated at around 4.8 amps with a absolute uh, maximum open circuit of just over 5 amps. But here's the cool thing about monocrystalline essentially on a lousy day, like today, where you have no visible sun basically, you've got the next thing to dark rain clouds hanging over the sky uh, is not hot out it's almost raining and you got your solar panels hooked up now I just did a voltage checks before and they were sitting around 21, 22 volts and as you can see I've got one set of cables okay, and that single set of cables is connected to one panel right, the other panel sitting beside is not connected so there you have your cables, and then all I got is a multimeter running directly to the cables. So I'm bypassing the charge controller right now, just to give you a little bit of a demonstration. But you can see, when I'm set on the 10 amp setting, it's putting over a little bit over 530 milliamps. Okay, so here's the other thing. I'm standing right in front of this solar panel. Okay, watch this number. So the clouds are in the way, I'm in the way, and it's still putting out 540 milliamps. Now if I stand out of the way of the panel, you see that jumps up to 630 milliamps. So 630 milliamps, um, well that's not extremely impressive because when you times that by 20 volts, your your number is is quite low, okay? And you might say, well, that's a 90 watt panel. But let me tell you this: it's doing something. It's it's putting out over 20 volts. Let's just check that. Just to keep me honest here. Um, just connect this. Put it to a higher voltage because it's over 20. Probably. Right now it's about 28 volts, although I tend not to believe that meter, it sort of jumps around on the high voltage mark. It's putting over 20 volts anyway. Okay, now. Well, yeah, no, that's about right, because it was putting out. Uh, 22 or 23 a little while ago, and it seems to have cleared up the tiniest bit. But so there you go. You know, even on the lousiest days, these do something. Now, if you have 20 volts and you have 500 milliamps, okay, that's uh, 10 watts. Now you might say, well, that's at 20 volts, though, which is very logical thinking because your charge controller may only need 13 and a half volts to uh, uh, overcome the potential of your battery or 14 volts let's say but as long as you have an MPPT charge controller which is a maximum power point tracking system it's going to convert that 20 volt 500 milliamp signal into 14 volts 750 milliamp one milli or one amp pulses. Okay, so you're going to get 10 watt pulses going to that battery. And that's the beauty of monocrystalline combined with MPPT charge controller on a lousy day. Okay, now the difference would be, let's say, polycrystalline solar panel with a straight up charge controller with no logic, no PowerPoint tracking. What you're going to find is, is the polycrystalline is more affected by the overcast and certainly now you see like right now you see that thing's putting out 28 volts. Now I'm standing right in front of the solar panel, like right in front of it, blocking any possible sun and it loses a volt or two. Okay, now you're going to see more drastic changes in in when when you have a brilliant sun and you stand right in front of it as far as amps go but um 
point is, is that they they capture ambient ambient light better somehow, and you can tell me, you can educate me if you know the difference because I've been looking, trying to look it up. Somehow, in the difference between how a monocrystalline structured cell versus a polycrystalline structured cell, there are differences when there are partial um, uh, differences in voltage and amperage across one cell versus the next. It's not so much that they're wired differently, they're, they're pretty much wired the same as the polycrystalline cells, but in, in as far as photon interruption on a portion of each cell, they behave a little bit differently. It's not that they've gone and taken this particular panel and hooked extra diodes between cells. It's, that's what I thought at first, but it isn't. It's in the actual structure of the cell and how it handles partial shading, um, cloud cover, a leaf falls on your solar panel. They're just a little bit more tolerant for that. And for that reason, especially the clouds, I feel that they are pretty much the best way to go for British Columbia because we do get a lot of cloudy days. I mean, we've had just as many cloudy days this early summer as we've had sunny days. So I think that they're they're a good buy at 300 bucks a piece, just under. Uh, you can't go wrong. At Canadian Tire, they'll sell you one panel that's five watts less very comparable albeit but they'll sell you one 85 watt panel for 599 600 I'll sell you two 90 watt panels for the same price okay so there you have it look up my uh, my ads and, and check them out thank you very much